So I'm going to talk to you about uh, does data science have a potential to make the world a better place? Um, and I can give a five second talk also by simply saying yes, uh, but then you'll be left with 17 minutes of my time, um, which I can utilize to maybe convince you a bit better. So I'll give you the longer answer of yes. So um, let's ask this question. How can data science change the world? Firstly, I would like to talk to you about data science providing solutions, providing insights. Let us ask about situation uh, in India with arsenic poisoning, right? Now you may not hear about it, but there are several spots across India which have arsenic in water. What you're drinking, which you need to drink to survive, is also killing you. Now on the other hand, you have a lot of places with very high amount of road accidents. Now let us say, we, we say we don't have much money to fix the problem. We have very limited resources. Should we give up? And that might have been the older practice. But if you are a data scientist, a student, a high school student, a college student, you don't have to have a PhD like me. Most of it would not come in handy. In fact, my PhD is not in data science and I'm doing data science. So you can actually look at information, tell government that, okay, you have budget only to fix 10% of the problem. We'll tell you the 10% which will result in a bigger amplitude of effect. Let us say, if 10% spots in India account for 90% poisoning of arsenic, you may fix that with only the limited budget you have. You may be able to fix 90% of the problem while having the same budget by doing efficient data science instead of allocating resources equally. Similarly, you can find out what spots on road result in maximum accidents. Instead of deploying your resources uniformly, by deploying them selectively, you may be able to prevent, let's say, half the deaths on roads. So data science can come of practical value. Let us say you are a 50-year-old engineer who comes from, say, mechanical engineering background and was working for some uh, airplane company in Houston. And because of automation, you've been laid off. Now you don't have a job. But you have skills to think. We all learn to think. It doesn't matter. You don't even need to come from an engineering background. We all, as human beings, have a logical capacity. You know how to analyze data. Maybe just a few months of picking up programming abilities, picking up few programming languages, picking up few statistical tools might make you capable of solving very important problems in your neighborhood and also getting top-notch employment. So data science can come in handy, doesn't matter whether you're sitting in India, whether you're sitting in US. Now, data science is very useful also to make a world better place because it can personalize things. Let us say I have a diabetic uh, relative and she is, uh, let's say, going through sugar up and sugar down, right? She's going through various things and doesn't want to always uh, prick her fingers every day, right? Or even if she does, she's having other problems. Can I come up with simple data science solution and some small things with chip, simply processing all that information in cell phone that I can suggest to my aunt, my auntie, what time she should be eating an apple or what time she should not be eating something, and the advice comes popped up on her cell phone. So instead of just checking her Facebook, she also checks an app which says, is dynamically monitoring everything to improve her life. That's a simple potential of data science, and that kind of a project can be done by any high schooler. And trust me, when I, I'm not simply saying by any high schooler can do it as a hypothetical, after coming back to India in 2014, there have been over 3,000 students, several of them from high school, majority of them doing their bachelors, who have joined me in coming up with these kind of solutions. And I'll even tell you about the story of how I got in data science. It's rather an uh, innovative, accidental story. I didn't get trained in data science. And I'll tell you, if I can do data science, any one of you can do it. So, but data science also has a very interesting potential. That's of predicting things. OK? Now, can you predict, let us say, what damage or when can an earthquake come? Currently, it's a very unpredictable event, but can you get better at it? Can you also predict weak points in a dam or in a bridge? You're building a bridge. You want to make sure that the bridge lasts a very long time. 
or you're thinking of stock market, right? I'm not necessarily saying become a billionaire, nothing wrong with it. If you have the capacity, go to stock market, do trading, become a billionaire. But maybe you even come from a socially responsible perspective that you don't want to see a crash. You want to save people's investment. Let's say people's retirement money is invested in some bonds, in some stock market options. You want to save that, can you predict it? So data science gives you immense ability to predict, but when I talk of prediction, I must say there are more snake oil salesmen than there are good predictors. So become that, that data science has become easy. Everyone is going to say that we can tell you the future. Being able to tell future was supposed to be a divine ability and almost still remains so. I can tell you maybe a few things about tomorrow. You ask me about stock market behavior one month from now, at least I'm not that good of a data scientist, I'll raise my hands. But I can tell you about a few things that, like for example, we are doing. We are trying to predict epilepsy. If an epileptic patient, when is the epileptic patient about to have a seizure? By putting in some EEG probe and save that person, save her or him, let's say constant medication. So that she or he has to take medicine right before the incident, sit down, be safer. So prediction has a lot of ability, but what is missing in data science, because I just don't want to tell you and show you a dream without telling you of the cautionary tale, that when you're predicting what is fundamentally missing in everything that we see around, you see television programs on finance which says stock market is going to go up, this is going to go down, right? This is how your health is going to be. Everyone says with certainty. If you come with scientific temperament, the first thing you should learn is uncertainty is that you're dealing with probability. So you must understand that while predicting, but data science does have an immense ability to predict future. In fact, prediction can also help us take corrective measures. In fact, several countries are even utilizing that to uh, predict wars, to predict like terrorist attacks and actually deal with them better. In fact, one of the reasons a country which I have spent most of my adult life in, US, uh, is doing quite well in preventing a lot of attacks on its own soil after 9-11 is actually heavily through data science. And I believe it can do better. I believe people like me can even contribute to making democratic societies safer. Whether it be India, whether it be US or Canada, we can make societies safer by predicting things. Now, what is data science? I've been talking about data science, that it's a wonderful field. You can do anything with it. But you might ask, what is really this about? A uh, lot of my friends who are PhDs like me in various fields, they say, we analyze data. You analyze data, we analyze data. You start, started calling yourself a fancy word, a data scientist. Aren't we all data scientists because we process data? So there is a distinction. But uh, there are several jokes. Uh, uh, something that I like a lot is a data scientist is somebody, a statistician who's just got a Mac instead of working on PC, so it's just a fancy statistician, right? But what has uh, started happening is that from 80s onwards, especially in just last four or five years, from 2010 onwards, our processing ability, our computation power has become immense. I'll give you an example. Let us say I wanted to find out how people are dealing with stress, depression, and suicide. Earlier, I might have to recruit 20 PhD students and at the end of their five-year PhD, they would have gone around, found out patterns from different countries, called up different reporters to give information about their newspapers, how is it being covered in their newspapers, how is it being covered in their TV programs, all that, right? And found out some patterns. Now, I can sit on Google Trends, and preferably, being a bit lazy, I can ask one of my students to sit on Google Trends, and I would just simply come up with a framework of what you need to do, and the person would find out patterns from Google Trends, would then do, write a simple web scraping algorithm, right? And find out what, how much is Times of India covering suicide, how much is New York Times covering suicide, what are the episodes. The, there'll be one person in two hours will search IMDB database to all, for all the movies and find out about those movies, are they promoting suicide, are they promoting depression, what are the cultural influences. In fact, if you're a bit of a lazy data scientist, you might come up with a bad conclusion from it. You might say, let's say, a few years back, suicide just surged. But if you're smart, you might also do the search of Suicide Squad, an interesting movie. So the keyword in Google Trends, 
suicide might have come because people were searching for suicide squad. So it's not just simple, but what data science is, it's merger of computer science, statistics, and very importantly, being able to present data. I may not be a wonderful speaker, but at least I can convey the idea to you. What is missing is that a lot of students come to me, they can't convey the idea. They can't think of a good diagram, good visualization. Without having that, you can't do data science. Because what is data science? It's actionable intelligence, something that can help you, right? What is the point of data science if it cannot help you? For it to be able to help you, where you are not a specialist, I need to be able to convey it in simple terms. So being able to digest that information, convey it in simple terms, is also important. And last but not least, if you're trying to solve a problem, let's say I'm trying to work on earthquakes, I need to know about seismology. So it involves uh, domain knowledge. So here is a simple illustration showing the intersection of all four to illustrate the point that it is, you need intersection of all these skills. So all that said, you can have all of it, but still might come up with stupid biases, right? Uh, as this joke says, give me a moment to find an unbiased data that supports calling you and your idea stupid. You might still retain all your biases despite having world-class data. So logic, nothing beats logic. And I do want to emphasize two things. One is logic. Logic can be independent of data. Data without logic is useless. Logic can still work without data, something that all data scientists forget. Because when we are busy in a trade, we tend to become just technicians. We forget that the important part is also to be philosopher about it. You must philosophize, step back, and ask yourself, just data and inferences drawn without due caution can be problematic. And we can also use data for bad things. People can use data to influence elections. People can use data to create hate. So data is a tool. Data doesn't come with ideology. Just like nuclear power does not come with ideology, it can be used to create great energy for you. It can also be used to create atom bombs. So data is one of the most powerful things you have these days. It's more powerful than nuclear technology. And data can be handled by a 15-year-old. You don't need to have a PhD, right? All of you are potential data scientists. So data is immensely powerful, but it has to be used well, and nothing gets rid of uh, these biases. Second important thing I want to talk about is uncertainty. Please don't be certain when you're handling data. And please know when somebody like me with specs, with PhD, comes on stage and tells you this is certainly going to happen, this is what my data is showing, assume they're likely wrong, OK? So just ask yourself, what is the data that has gone in that processing? So develop skepticism, something that is not happening in data science much. So I would like to, I have, I think, made enough case of how data can be useful. But I would like to also raise this point that why a lot of you who are hearing about data science, why should you choose data science? Uh, it's one of the hottest jobs out there. It's the most paying job, right? That's one reason. But honestly, for me, that's the minor reason. Bigger reason is there's a lot of data. We are in an age, let's say, from my last great grand ancestor, which will be the same as for you, right? Let's say out of Africa, 80,000 years ago, we all shared probably the same bunch of four or five ancestors who migrated out, populated uh, what is now India, right? But the amount of data from that time to just my grandfather, those generations saw, was less than what my generation or your generation, who's uh, 10 years younger than me or even 20 years younger than me, is seeing in just five years. We are going through data deluge. This is flooding. We have more information being generated every year than was generated from beginning of humanity till that last year. So that's an important reason. The most important reason is it has the ability to change the world. If I was to just make money, I would be doing my data science in Wall Street. I'm not against it. I want to be rich. I want to be richer. Uh, don't get me wrong. I don't profess poverty. But for me, the biggest driving force of why I'm doing data science is I can solve maybe arsenic problem. Maybe I can improve somebody's epilepsy. Maybe I can solve somebody's alcoholism problem with data science. So for me, that's the driving force of why you should do data science. And I hope that will be the driving force for you as well. So. When you think of such a hot job, and that's what a lot of students come to me with, and they get surprised. I say, clean up your data. 
let us say you're telling me data about road accidents in India, clean up, check every statistics. So the most important thing is, when you say it's the sexiest job of 21st century, please don't be fooled, I'm not trying to sell you something that it's not. It involves sitting down on, in front of your computer for several hours. Some aspect of data science also means going in field and verifying the facts. If you're not relying on secondary data, if you're doing primary data collection. So it's not just about a nerd sitting in basement programming something, maybe creating some doomsday scenario, or analyzing the most wonderful pattern in stock market. It also means tallying every single entry, making sure it's clean. Because the rule of thumb is garbage in, garbage out. If you have bad data, no amount of processing can salvage it. So please uh, do approach data science with caution. So if you want to be data scientist, what do you need to do? Learn to code, but most importantly, learn statistics and mathematics. Start seeing patterns in the data. Pick up data sets, analyze them, present them. Last three are missing, right? Uh, last three are commonly missing uh, in India because people come to me, everyone knows how to program, but they don't have statistical ability. And when I say statistics, everyone just thinks of artificial intelligence. That's very useful, but if you don't know correlation and you don't know the problems with correlation, you're probably not going to make a good data scientist. So if you want to be, aspire to be a data scientist, spend equal time understanding mathematics and statistics, spend equal time understanding how to communicate your data, okay? Don't start coding blindly. Look at your data, what it means. Don't not read much. To be a good data scientist, you need to be able to analyze something. Let's say if I'm saying uh, analyze something of epilepsy and you don't know what epilepsy is, you likely make blunders. So read a lot. Read everything that comes across your way. And do not torture the data to confess to anything. There's a famous saying, if you torture the data enough, it'll confess to anything. Don't do that mistake. And don't write your emails dot, 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 like this. So if you don't know how to communicate, these are the applications I get. 99% of people who apply to me get rejected because of that last reason. And I'm not the only sort of grammar extremist. Everyone tends to be my way, whosoever is employing you. So being exceptional is about being able to visualize your data. It's also basically fine ways to find data, right? Not just secondary data. Let's say we found interesting ways of finding data by getting people on ground, collecting data. So we have recruited a lot of people through citizen science model uh, and through intern Shala, and it's been a stellar success that I never imagined coming to India. One of the most interesting stories I have to tell is we've been able to find patterns in noise and how two different things cannot have same noise unless they're related. What everyone throws away, thinking it's noise, we've been able to utilize it. And this success story comes from a student who decided to give up his very well-paying job to take a plunge with me. His name is Ishan Goyal. And I was very scared when he did it because he's son of a friend of my father. I was like, my father's going to kill me if his career doesn't go well. And he's just quitting his job to just like embark on a journey with me. And now we are able to find patterns in so many things, find how UV radiation is happening across the globe, how ozone spread is happening, how pollutants are spreading, and how even diseases are spreading. So what our dream is, what my dream is over next one year, we've been able to predict epilepsy quite well. Can I save lives of people with epilepsy? Can I make better homes where you know what temperature has to be there? Can I also make people de-addicted? through data science. And I don't want to use this platform to pitch my ideas, so I'm just basically sharing the dream with you, that these are the dreams. If you are interested, I'm very easy to find. I hope I have spread an idea that data science is very easy. Trust me, if I can do it, I started out with a bachelor's in microbiology, then studied animal behavior, then I was recording currents from neurons. And somehow I got in data science because I realized I cannot do drug discovery without artificial intelligence. So I had a very tortuous journey to coming to data science. So if I can do data science, any one of you can do data science. I don't even own a smartphone, right, despite doing data science. So I'm that behind in technology. So if I'm a data scientist, any one of you can be a data scientist. So I hope I leave you with this message and some of you become data scientists of future. Thank you.